We hope you don't have cancer. But if you do, this show's for you. The Stupid Cancer Show! Hey guys, we're back on another exciting episode of The Stupid Cancer Show in our ongoing trend about stupid infertility. I'm joined here today by Gina Marie Maddow. Why are you here? I am. <laughs> I'm an attorney at Circle Surrogacy and Egg Donation. I'm also the surrogate matching manager, and I'm an experienced egg donor. So I wanted to share my experiences about egg donation and cancer. That's a lot of hats. Yes, <laughs> many. It's a lot of hats. You know that book, Caps for Sale? Yes. Yeah, that's on a <laughs> Google it. No, we'll put a link below to Caps for Sale, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's me. All the Lots of hats. And the monkey steal the hats. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I'm sorry. We're, it's all about tangents right now. Um, well, Circle Surrogacy is not an unfamiliar organization to Stupid Cancer. They partnered with us many times before. They're one of the premier organizations that support the young adult cancer community for surrogacy services. And we're very appreciative of their support in the past. And um, how did you get involved with them? Like, what, what makes one decide to just be an egg person? Yeah, so I got involved. Egg donor? With, yes. Egg, egg distributor? Egg donor. <laughs> I got involved. <laughs> See a little eggs with little, the Cadbury cream eggs are popping up. Yes, here. that's me. Yeah. Lots of Cadbury yes. creams. <laughs> um, I came to. Now egg I can't even think about <laughs> Cadbury cream eggs. You'll always Thank think you. of them in a different way. Okay. Easter will be different. <laughs> <sighs> So I got involved with egg donation. I don't donation. pick these guests. They just show up. <laughs> I'm going to send you Cadbury okay. eggs later. <laughs> Done. I got involved as an egg donor through my work at Circle Egg Donation. Um, it was my one of my first jobs as an intern while I was in law school. Um, and I found that I just became really passionate about the program. I really liked getting to see the intended parents with their children, what this was doing for them, how it was you know, enriching their lives. And I really wanted to be a part of that program. So after about a year or so of working with Circle, um, I signed up to be an egg donor myself. And wow. yeah, it was a very special experience. I'm very happy that I had that opportunity. And it's a unique experience because I'm able to be a donor, but also able to see the other side of the fence through my client work with the intended parents. Well, I was going to ask, as an attorney, there must be a different kind of crow's nest view yes. on the value of this and what it means to people out there. Right. Because before I was acting as an attorney, I didn't know much about egg donation other than it existed. Wait, you were acting as an attorney? You weren't I was a law attorney? clerk at first. Okay. Law clerk okay. and then became it wasn't an like attorney. improv everywhere attorney edition. Okay. No. Right. Um, I did all of my egg donations, all four of them while I was working full time and in law school full time. Okay. So, and that's kind of really what the, what shaped my career or the professional path I went to. And that's how I knew surrogacy and egg donation work or assisted reproduction was really the right path for me. So it must be emotional yes. to be an egg donor and to see something that doesn't work, something that does work. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of technology and biology and science into this. It's not just like the... Um, the uh, altruism of wanting to right. do this. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, it's definitely an emotional process. Not only are you helping somebody create a life, you're also taking um, hormonal medications, which yes. will be impacting that as well. You become a well. human Petri dish. P pretty much, either a couple times during cycle. Petri dish? I, Petri dish. Yeah. Comment below, I don't know. <laughs> a couple times during cycle, I, when I was driving or just at home watching TV, I noticed I was just randomly crying for no apparent reason. Yeah. So it was it was interesting for my uh, my husband and I to kind of go through that together, and him to say, well, "What are you crying? Like, what's happening?" I'm like, "Nothing. There, like, there is there is no reason. This is Nothing just me yet. today. No, like, no. just give me a hug. We're fine." Yeah. <laughs> um, but I yet assume your husband was aware that you were doing. This. Oh, very Not much so clandestine MI6 egg retrieval thing. No, he was very much okay, aware. Okay. Um, I, I told him, I, we were only dating at the time. Okay. So I told him about this and it was important for me to have his support as well as the support of my, my parents and my siblings. And I was very fortunate that they were all very supportive and really happy with what I was doing. I wouldn't have done it without them. I mean, it's a labor of love. It's like God's work. It's mm -hmm. so wonderful to see that because I mean, yes, infertility is a thing. Mm -hmm. There are many, many people, probably I don't know, hundreds of thousands that are just in, infertile by nature yeah. due to circumstances. And yet there are then communities. We actually, the show we just did, the one before this show, we talked about the difference between 
um, iatrogenic word of the day, infertility and, and, and congenital infertility. Just to remind our friends out there in uh, SAT land, <laughs> iatrogenic is when something is induced versus something that just is happening preternatally. Preternatally? Prenatally. I, I, prenatal. Thank you. <laughs> I make up words. <laughs> Uh, but the whole point is that Circle took a very big step in the surrogacy world by yes. recognizing that there isn't just a traditional market, and I say market of customers or consumers, mm -hmm. who are looking to do traditional surrogacy because of X, Y, and Z reasons, but there is an entire community out there in the cancer space who become infertile because of their treatments and have no biological path to parenthood. That, that, that was a big decision for them to, to do that. And they've even hired one of my dear friends, Jennifer Rackman, who's here in the studio. You're going to see her hand fly up in the... There we go. <laughs> there <she is. laughs> Jennifer Rackman's here. She'll be doing a show after this one, um, who herself was made infertile from cancer treatment and mm -hmm. went through surrogacy, through Circle Surrogacy. And then you hired her to work yeah. at Circle yeah. Surrogacy. They just went cross-eyed with Jen Rackman stuff. <laughs> but it's a really... It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a real model. Of, of citizenship for a company to do that. Yeah. What's been your perspective on that? Well, I think it's really something that's very important for the overall community. It's been very important for me personally. I feel very proud to work for a company that's servicing these parents that really need assistance without us and other agencies, other surrogates, donors, they wouldn't have that path to parentage. So it really makes me feel very proud to work for an organization that's so supportive of everyone. We're an yeah. inclusive company. We accept all different types of people, all different types of backgrounds from all different communities. And we think that everybody deserves to have a family and family building options if they want to pursue that. So what's your egg count? <laughs> my egg count. Um, for all four of my donations, I had between 18 and 27 eggs retrieved. Wow. So lots of eggs. That um, is. Yeah, there are. You're like hyper fertile. Fertile enough anyways, right? <laughs> fertile enough. <laughs> Hashtag fertile enough. <laughs> Um, there are five babies that I'm aware of from my donations. Wow. Yeah, there could be others. I know that they have frozen embryos that are left over, um, but so far I know about five. Is there like an emotional detachment syndrome that you have in a sense? Is that, is that a thing where you know that there's a biological mm -hmm. piece of you living on earth and you're not like you're the biological mom, but you're not the mom? Yeah, so I wouldn't say that I feel a sense of attachment. Or um, detachment. Or yeah, I, I think it's a kind of a gray area. It's somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, I've always known going into this process that I was acting as a donor. I wasn't pursuing it as a path to parenthood. So right. I always went at this with that approach, that I'm doing this for somebody else so they can build their family, so they can raise that child or children and have a really, a really special life. So I wouldn't say that I feel attached, but I also wouldn't say that I feel detached because right. some of the parents, or at least one set of one couple, um, I maintain some contact with them via email. They send me, you know, emails, photos, we're social media friends, and it's really special to get to see their boys, you know, grow up and right. how it makes me very confident in my decision. But I don't feel attached to them, but I also don't feel detached to them. They're very special to me. I feel like I have love for them in my heart. Um, the person who I'm most connected with in that relationship is their mom. Um, she's the one that I got to have email exchanges with. She's the one that I developed the relationship with. And what's really special about her is she reminds me so much of my mom. So Ooh, when, yes, okay. when I read her profile, um, all I could think about was this could have been written by my own mom. How could I? And I wasn't sure if I was going to do a fourth and final donation. But after I read her profile, I said, I, ha I have to. This woman is just like my mom. And if she's anything like my mom, she's going to give her kids a really special and beautiful life. And that's been the donation that's been the most impactful because I've got to have that contact with them. And she's allowed me to be included in the sense that, you know, I get some updates and I get to really feel happy for her family, for her and her family, and right. very confident about my decision to donate. And also, like, plug again to Circle because I know their their business. They they sponsored us in the past and been very supportive of our, our community. It really is like a soup to nuts concierge process. They are you know, because no one knows what you're doing. There's right. no there's no what to expect when you're expecting surrogacy. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> and I, matching 
yep. you know, donors with surrogates mm-hmm. and then the surrogate relationships yeah. with the with the parents yep. to be it's really an emotional yeah. intensive process and mm-hmm. you you guide them right. the entire way. Yes, absolutely. We're a full service agency, so we can do everything for them. Social work aspect, legal, financial, we can take care of everything except for the medical piece. They'll have to have their own doctor. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we provide them support and guidance along the way. Like you said, it's very emotional and we're a relationship-based agency. We feel that the more contact the parents can have with their surrogate and their donor, the more openness and honesty there is within those relationships, the better it's going to be for everyone, for the parents, for the surrogate, and most importantly, for the child. I mean, just the fact that you can really um, build a um, almost a homogeneity between the general uh, community, the LGBT community, yes. and the cancer community yes. out there it's astonishing. I don't know any other group that is that diverse and divested in Mm -hmm. making a difference. Yeah, we're all about inclusion, helping any person that wants to build their family. That's really what we're all about. Not everybody has the resources readily available to them to be able to do this. And that's where Circle steps in and says, you know, when you thought that you had no other options and this would never happen for you, we're here to tell you that this really can happen for you and this is successful. Well, Gina Marie Maddow. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really, we'll put links below to all the information you need to learn about surrogacy and the great work Circle does for uh, for folks. But it, it, you're a if if you were a guy, we'd say you're a mensch. <laughs> um, it just it's God's work. It's amazing. Thank you for changing people's lives. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm oh, happy pleasure. to be here. Awesome. We like happy shows. <laughs> we're like we're not talking about terrible things that go on in cancer. These are good things that go on in cancer. Yeah. So once again. Another great show. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye, folks. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching our show. Please subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you are alerted whenever we post new content. Follow us online at stupidcancer.org, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You know the deal. Stupid Cancer. We make young adult cancer suck less. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.